Hallelujah. Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord.
Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for all your blessings, for your mercy, and for your grace, for all that you are. And Lord, I just thank you that you can always be reached through prayer, and we can feel your presence going with us every day. I thank you for health and strength, and I thank you for those that are here, Lord, and I ask your blessings upon each one. I ask your blessings upon this uh, service and this message. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, we have a few announcements. Um, this past when, uh, Thursday was the National Day of Prayer, and the theme of that prayer time uh, was unity. And they talked about, um, and they did that through the day, but it was also a special time in the evening to come together in prayer. And they talked about this unity that we need to have in this country. And they talked about how, you know, it seems like um, everything is just being divided and, and there's so much turmoil oil going on um, along all different kinds of lines. And so, you know, the prayer this year is for unity. And so, uh, you know, not just for one day, but let's continue to pray for unity in this country, um, you know, all the time. We continue to pray for our leaders and um, and we pray for our people. The other thing, um, actually, um, today we have a video we're going to be showing uh, done by Kirk Cameron and it's called Connect. And it's regarding, um, uh, let's see. Uh, cell phones and um, social media. And so, you know, we want to look at how that affects society today and how, especially how it affects the young people. Um, right now we have a whole group of young people that don't know what it's like to live without a computer or without a cell phone, you know, without um, social media. You know, because this is what they grew up with and, and grew up on. And so uh, we have to be able to know as parents and grandparents how to uh, address some of the problems and the issues that may come up with social media. So we'll be um, seeing a video in regards to that today and maybe a brief discussion afterwards. And um, I think this is an important enough uh, subject that we may address it or may reshow um, this video sometime in June. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm thinking um, that we may do that because it is a very important topic and um, we need to be able to protect our kids. Okay. Um, and the other thing I want to say is next Sunday, I mean, next Saturday, we'll have our uh, communion uh, time. Every Monday, we have Bible study um, from 6.30 to 7.30. We also, on Mondays, have the uh, training for the addiction recovery, and that starts at 7.15. And then next Saturday is the second Saturday, and so we have our uh, Praise Him Variety Show Talent Night with the seniors at Georgetown Station um, Apartments in their uh, community room. And um, this month, one of my coworkers will be performing, and we call him Mr. T. So Mr. T is going to be performing next um, Saturday evening at 6 o'clock at the Georgetown Station. And of course, all of the lovely people there will be uh, performing as well. And we always have a really, really great time. So um, everyone's welcome to come. And again, that's uh, the second Saturday of every month, and that's at the Georgetown Station of Park. Um, last, uh, the last couple weeks, we've been in a series of messages regarding uh, SEEK, called SEEK. And it started out being a four-part uh, message 
Uh, the first one, part being, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The second one was seek to glorify God. The third, which is today, is seek the Lord. The fourth is seek peace. And this morning when I was studying, God gave me another part to add to this. Seek his favor. And so um, we'll be continuing on. We're going to just take it as far as we um, you know, can each, each day that we have service. Uh, today we'll start with number three, seek the Lord. Um, our overall passage of scripture is taken from Colossians, the third chapter, verses one through three. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Heavenly Father, I just lift this message to you. I lift up every person listening to this message, including me, the messenger, that you would let everyone that hath an ear hear, that the eyes of understanding be open, and that the hearts are receptive to your word. And we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Our scripture today uh, for part three is coming from the book of Ezra, the eighth chapter, verses uh, 21 through 23. And um, let me, before I even go into the scripture, let me kind of uh, give a little bit of background. Um, this is during the time of the uh, 70 years, or, or well, I think it ended up being 69, and then there's still one year um, left to go, which won't happen until down the line. But at any rate, uh, this was the time when Nebuchadnezzar had come and into Jerusalem and he had taken uh, captive the people. Uh, the, some of the ones you are all familiar with, uh, you've heard about uh, three young men or four young men actually was uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel. And we all know what happened to them and so they were taken to Babylon uh, with King, by King Nebuchadnezzar, and um, uh, they actually spent, from the time that they were taken, and they were young men, you know, teenagers, um, uh, in their late teens, I, I believe, taken, and the rest of their life they spent in captivity there in Babylon. But... Even though they were in captivity, they continued to closely follow God, to worship Him, uh, to pray to Him without wavering. They just kept the faith, and they just stuck with God the whole way, no matter what. And, um, you know, if you want to read that, you know, get a chance to read that and, and see all the trials and things that they went through because of their faith. And every time, God stuck with them, and they received the victory. Um this same Daniel uh, is also the one to whom God showed the things which are still, which are still yet to come. You know, that um, also John the disciple uh, saw those same things on the Isle of Patmos, and from that came the book of Revelation. So uh, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and some of the other books are all interconnected. At any rate, this captivity or exile, as some people put it, existed for about 70 years, and the Jews had started, um, you know, had, had found grace in the king, and, and the king had uh, allowed them to go back, this particular king, because this is like, you know, maybe about, at this point, like maybe, um, I don't know, 80 years um, from the time, 70 years, from the time of captivity. And um, uh, so the, this particular king, Nebuchadnezzar, had gone on into eternity, and several other kings had come and gone. And this particular king had told him, 
yeah, they could start to return back to Jerusalem. So um, when they went, they they went in waves in, in of three. You know, it was a group that went first, and then there was a second group, and then there was a third group. And uh, at this time, this was the time that Ezra existed. This is when he lived. And uh, by the way, Ezra also uh, was believed to have written First and Second Chronicles as well as the Book of Nehemiah. And a lot of people think that Nehemiah wrote Nehemiah, but Ezra wrote Nehemiah. At any rate, um, <clears throat> the Book of Ezra describes two out of these three waves of uh, or groups that went uh, and returned to Jerusalem. Um, first group went and started rebuilding the temple and at that time the prophets Haggai and Zechariah ministered to the people uh, there and then Zechariah was another one of the prophets that wrote about the things that are still yet to come that are in the book of Revelation and so you know again all these books are interconnected um, when the people in, in, in the book of Haggai, um, Haggai, you know, was there when they were rebuilding the temple and they were trying to focus on getting that thing done. And the people, though, since they were just getting back to Jerusalem, were starting to focus more on building their own homes instead of building the, uh, the temple. And so Haggai was the one that got them back on track to finish building the temple. The second group was led by Ezra. And Ezra was also the one that found the scrolls of the writings of Moses, uh, which are the books Genesis through Deuteronomy. And so when Ezra found those books, it gave them more of a, a picture of what the temple is supposed to look like and what the, the way God said to do it. And in fact, this is the same temple that um, centuries later, Jesus was in those, that same temple teaching the people. Um, at any rate, uh, Ezra um, used the word of God, you know, the Genesis through Deuteronomy to help teach the people because they had been in Babylon all that time. And so many had been brought, born at that time. They didn't know those things. And so he taught them, and he also encouraged them to obey the law. Uh, the third group to return, Ezra wrote about in the book of Nehemiah, so we won't really uh, get into that, but um, because Nehemiah focused on building the wall around the city. So the temple was built first, and then when Nehemiah came along, he was still in Babylon and he had heard about the temple being built and he had heard about how the wall had, was just still broken down and in, in rubble and, and everything else. And he had a love for Jerusalem even though he had never been there. He was born in captivity and he had never been there, but he had a love for it and he wanted that wall to be rebuilt. And so. Uh, that book of Nehemiah talks about that. Um, even Malachi comes in on the scene um, in the latter days of Ezra and Nehemiah. And so many people look at the book of Malachi and they only think tithes and offerings. But Malachi talked about the coming of Christ. And so, you know, they were all in that time span. Some earlier and then some later in that time span but it all comes together and gives us a good picture so now let me read Ezra the eighth chapter uh, verses <laughs> verses uh, 21 through 23 then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen 
to help us against the enemy in the way. Because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Um, so they had already talked to the king. The king had given them permission to go back to, to Jerusalem. As I said earlier, the first wave of people had gone, and um, they, they started rebuilding the temple. And, you know, when I think about that, it just came to me. Um, one of the things that Abraham did, everywhere he went, he built an altar for God. Everywhere he went. That would be the first thing that he would do. And so here these people are going back to Jerusalem, and this is the first thing they do, is to rebuild the temple. Um, yes, you know, later some of them got sidetracked and started building their houses, but then they got back on track and started rebuilding the temple. Um, now, when it was time for Ezra to take the second group back to Jerusalem, these people were still, you know, practicing the Babylonian ways, and some of them were pagan ways, and some of them, you know, were not for God, but at the same time, um, you know, here's Ezra, he's telling them what the, the Lord had said, you know, where they came from, how it came to be, that whole exodus, um, and how God had provided for them, and about the sacrifices, and about the, the temple, and about the, the laws, and he was teaching them all of these different things. Um, and so they were getting ready to go, uh, but they knew that along the way, there were going to be some enemies that they would run across. That, you know, these were barbaric times. And so it was nothing for people back then to um, see someone uh, and, and, and attack them and, and kill them and take their stuff. I, you know, that's just what they did back then. And so these people you know, were afraid about that, and but they had made that bold statement to the king about how the Lord was going to watch over them and take care of them and all of that. So they couldn't go back and then say, well, um, you know, we really do need some soldiers and we need some harness. You know, they couldn't do that. Um, it was time for these people to, um, you know, like get to where the rubber meets the road. They had to really have that faith. And so they knew that they were weak in faith, and um, they knew that they couldn't do it by themselves. And so they declared a fast. And um, a fast is a type of sacrifice because it uh, denies the body. It denies self. And it says no to the flesh. And instead of focusing on the flesh, it focuses on the spirit man so that the spirit man can uh, receive from God. If we look at Ezra 8.21, it tells us to seek of him a right way uh, for them and their children and all their possessions. They, they needed to uh, have protection. They needed um, for their children. They wanted to have a right way for their children, not just themselves, but for their children. And, um, you know, we have to... We have to realize that kids are going to grow up, but they need to grow up with godly influence. Either way, they're going to go from, you know, zero to whatever age. They're going to still grow up, but they need that godly uh, teaching and, and influence. So uh, they prayed for that as well. And then the interesting thing to me is that they prayed for their possessions. They wanted to make sure that whatever they had, whatever they took, was uh, something that was, uh, uh, you know, okay with God. Something that God wanted them to take. Because, like I said, that they were in Babylon, and Babylonians had all kinds of idols and things. And so 
um, you know, they wouldn't want to take anything that would be connected with idol worship or, um, you know, that might, might be contrary to what God wanted. So they even asked him uh, uh, the right way in regards to their possession. Um, so here they are getting ready to go. And um, they knew that they had to go. They had a desire to go. And they had some faith to go. But they wanted to make sure they did it all the right way. Um, you know, God has given every person a gift. He has something for every person to do. And uh, most people, you know, they know they have a particular gift or talent in a certain area. And then there are some that, you know, think that they're not good at things. Well, everybody has something. And so um, it's good to ask God, you know, what, what do you have for me to do? What is my purpose? And listen to what he has to say. But whether, either way, whether you know um, what or where or how or, or any of that, we must always seek of him a right way. In verse 23 it says, So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he entre was entreated of us. Um, this is a time where, uh, in place where pride could have stepped in, you know, and, and they could have said, well, we're going to go on and take this journey, and, um, you know, we know that if the enemy comes, we all got swords, and we got weapons, and, you know, we can defend ourselves. You know, they could have thought like that. They could have, uh, you know, tried to protect themselves along the way. But we know that pride goeth before fall. And, um, you know, if we try to make th do things our way, um, you know, with what we have and, and all of that, we limit ourselves and we also go through unnecessary sacrifices, you know, and hardship. So seeking God for his help and his way is always best. Um, the other part of, you know, problem that we tend to have is we get caught up in busyness. And, and that might even be more prevalent these days than pride because there's so much out there. There's so much to do, um, you know, and it's just, it's just mind-boggling. It's, we're just so busy, especially, you know, we, I, I've talked to some seniors. I'm, I guess I could consider myself a senior, but anyway. But it seems like I'm busier now than when I was, like, well, if I say how many years ago, it'll tell my age. But a long time ago, <laughs> um, it's, you know, it seems like I'm busier now than, you know, when my kids were home and, and you know, and I was doing all that with them. And, um, and that may be true. And, <laughs> but it's in a different way, you know. Um, it's, it's just all different these days. Everybody's busy. Even kids are busy. Everybody's busy. And because of this busyness, then they tend to get bored. Some get bored easily, and it's you know, it's just one thing after another. But um, this is just all another trap. And you know, sometimes we get going and we forget to eat because we're so busy going. And so I guess you could consider that a fast because we're going without food. But that's not really a proper fast. Uh, so pride is one of our enemies. Busyness is another, and both takes us in a direction of going our own, by our own strength, by our own way, in our own time. So seeking God for his help and his way is always best. I just want to reiterate that. So they fasted and prayed, seeking for direction. They were seeking for guidance. They were seeking for wisdom. They were seeking for protection uh, concerning this matter and seeking of him a right way for them and for their children and for their possessions. Uh, the result of that we see in Ezra, the eighth chapter, 31st verse, where it says, we left the river Ahava on the 12th day of the first month 
to go to Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the enemy and those who lay in wait by the way. You know, God was with them the whole way. And obviously there were people waiting to do harm to them. And God delivered them from the enemy and for those who were in wait to, to do something to them. And so um, we know that the enemy comes for the steal and kill destroy and destroy. That's in John 10, 10. And we know that um, Jesus came, that we would have life and that we would have it more abundantly. And so seeking God first in all things, seeking of him in the uh, for a right way, uh, not just for ourselves, but also for our families and even our possessions can make a difference between life abundantly or failure. Even if your faith starts to waver, seek him anyway, because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And it's, it's good, and it's also de-stressing, not distressing, but de-stressing, taking that stress out, to know that we can always go to Abba Father about any kind of matter, whatever, whatever, whenever we need direction, which is all the time, uh, we can always go to him. God's word tells us to cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us, and that's in verse Peter 5 and 7. Jesus paid the price for our sins and the curses that sin brought. Uh, he opened the door to give us access to Father God. But if there's anyone that doesn't know Jesus and the pardon of their sins, then you would fit in the category of those in Ezra 8.22 where it says, His wrath is against all them that forsake him. You see, it was appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. And Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. And so, we, we need him. We need him now, and we need him for all of eternity. And if you don't know him, would you please give me the honor of introducing him to you? And we'll have a song of invitation. There burns a fire with sacred heat, white hot with holy flame, and all who dare pass through its blaze will not emerge the same. Some as bronze and some as silver.
His mercies did erase Each time His purging cleanses deep I'm not sure that I'll survive Yet the strength in growing weaker Keeps my My soul desire Purged and cleansed and purified That the Lord be glorified He is consuming my soul Refining Choose the reform.